Hello everyone and uh, today we are going to cover these topics. Um, basically we are doing Java Selenium test automation related topics. We'll do a quick recap what what we have discussed till now and then we will move forward. Okay. done already. So we have talked about uh, how to install Java, how you can have Eclipse IDE in your system, setting up the environment variable, all those things we did in last session. And we did a very simple Selenium program as well. If you want to see that, you can simply go to QA test logic playlist. So this is the playlist here. I am putting it in chat window also. You can just save it or subscribe this. And uh, there, if you will see, there is playlist. This one, learn Selenium easily. Okay, here. Uh, this one. Okay, learn Selenium easily. There are sessions which says uh, roadmap to start with test automation, Selenium prerequisite setup, first Selenium code. And then I have talked about HTML and tags and all. But if you will do it in a particular order, it will be very easy for you. Okay. Second thing is, as I said, prerequisite is Java programming. That also, that also, you can go through a playlist called Java is easy. And if you see here, there is around 50 to 54 sessions are there. It's like pre-recorded session here. You can simply go from first session to the last if you are interested in learning Java properly. And that is one of the prerequisite actually, if you want to become a better test automation engineer especially for Selenium Java part, okay? So this, so today's topic is more of, of uh, um, Selenium topics. So I, I believe you have Selenium jars with you. So the quick recap is this, that there is a official website. If you will simply Google uh, Selenium download, if you will simply Google selenium.dev, this is the official website. And when you go to the download here, um, you will see this Java bindings. Okay. So Selenium works with different programming language. It works with C Sharp, Ruby, Java, JavaScript, Python. As of now, if you want to work with Java, you can click here and the jar will come to your um in in what we say in zip format you will get the whole bundle now you have to plug this or add this library to your java project right so last time as i said how to create java project it's simple you can in eclipse you can go to file you can say new file new and then project in the project you can select java project you can click on next and you can name that project so we have created one boot camp selenium 2024 if you see so here you just have to mention a new project name once you do that click on next and say finish but don't create the module. There is an option will, will come, which will say whether you want to create a module or not. So that will create a simple Java project. So what we did last time is simply checking whether Java program is working fine or not. So what we did, we created a package inside the SRC folder and the name is practice. How to create the package? Right click again and say new package. Okay, so when you do that, it will ask you the package name and finish. So mm -hmm. practice is the package and we created the very first program. So here, if you see any Java program will have a structure like this. 
like class name and then it will have its own scope starting here and let's say ending at 21st line here as of now and uh, this is the system dot out dot print ln this will just print hi and <clears throat> this is the way to open a browser and this is the way to open a website we are going to talk about these things in detail somebody has asked how to link the libraries to this project so that is simple as i said that you have to download right once you download it and extract it what you can do is you can come to the eclipse and say right click and say here you will see the option build path and go to configure build path there you will see class path as an option click on add external jar and you the extracted extracted jar you have to add right so you can go to the lib folder and select all this jar and say open and apply and close and then again repeat the same one more time for outer jars so inside the lib there are jars outside the lib also there are different jars you just select all these things and say open apply and close so all the libraries will be linked to your project class path it's like this so till this point is everyone is done let me know So our main topic today is how to find the element. Or basically, first thing we should talk about how to convert a test case or the test case which, which, which you check manually, manual test case to automated one, okay? You want to convert it to automated script. Or automation script so let's understand when you write uh, a manual test case you have steps right so generally you write the steps like uh, user performs login with credential <clears throat> and you provide some credentials then user clicks on submit button submit or sign in or whatever that button is there then user should be able to see a dashboard page right? something like that this kind of steps you write but in in automation there may be there will be more steps it's not like that that one step is in the manual will have the exactly one step in the automation right because when you say user performs login with the credential, there are three steps already involved into this. What are those th three steps? Like open the browser, correct? And uh, specify the URL which you want to open. Then uh, go to login page because you have to check you are in a particular login page or not. And then provide the credential then specify the credential, correct? It's like this, fine. Then uh, user clicks on the submit button, that is fine, that is one step and exactly one step maybe in the automation also. And user should be able to see the dashboard page or as of now, let me provide the uh, sp specify invalid credential. And when you provide the invalid screen, credential user should be able to see error message fine so this is our test case so exactly same thing you have to automate so i'm going here and let's put here like what we want to automate as a comment let me put here yeah so these are my steps i want to perform Okay, so how Selenium works is you have to understand that uh, Selenium works with the browser. That is first thing. So you have to invoke the driver, right? 
and how 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 it works is it, if you want to open a browser you have to instantiate a particular kind of uh, browser driver so so firefox driver is one such if you see here you you if you uh, if the bindings are there you will be able to see all the things about firefox driver also but uh, it's provided under selenium firefox package this firefox driver class is there and it is you know implementing the web driver interface it's like i'm not going into technicality part of that but let's understand as of now that this is the way you open the browser okay and you give all the control to the driver it's like this when you open a browser now the control will be there in this particular variable driver here you can give any name to this i have given this driver fine now we will understand about what are the things you can do when you write driver there are a lot of things you can do as of now what we want to do we want to open the browser and then we want to open a particular website let's say uh, this particular website we are taking as our use case we want to open a browser we want to open this website so this is the way you open the website you say driver dot get okay that's it till now so if we will simply run this program let's see what will happen I'm not doing anything now. It's happening automatically. So it has opened Firefox browser and it has opened this website also. And if you see the code, it's very simple. Now we'll talk about what other functions you have with driver. So when I say driver dot, so all these are the functions which you can use with a driver. So first thing is driver dot close. That means when your work is done, you can close the browser. Okay, you can close the browser. So let me close this. Now, when we will run it, it will be closed. So you will not be observed because the things will be very fast. That's why, as of now, let me put head dot sleep. Now the question is, what is this? Head dot sleep. So anytime when you want to pause your program, right, you can use head dot sleep. Okay. It will ask you to throw one exception. That's fine. So sleep is a function, right? It causes the currently executing thread to sleep for the specified number of milliseconds. It's like this. So it will it will open this website and it will wait and then we want to close the browser it's like this so when i will run this let's run this let's see what will happen so yes for after four seconds it will get closed automatically i have not done anything instead of you opening this website you can open any other website also so i'm giving you this code and uh, try at your end right, with this exact syntax check whether things are working fine but don't open this website you can open any website any other random website also you can put and check whether it is working or not okay now now what we want to do next we want to check other functions so close is one such function uh, what else here if i'll write driver dot so find element is one function we'll talk about this today but before that see here get current url is also a function get current url we will use this also get page source so let's understand get page source function what it does so this will give you the HTML code behind the whole page. So the same thing, 
which you will see right click and do view page source right this whole thing right this whole thing you can capture in a string by using get page source okay so you can try that so driver dot get page source this function will basically return one string and you can capture it and print it okay so get page source is basically to get page code or source okay page source or view source you do right so that will be basically in the form of html css and some javascript will come through get page source but then you have to store it somewhere right so you can keep it in a string let's say um, page source you can give any name and this fine what other functions we have uh driver dot get title if you see here there is a function get title what it is so basically every page has some title so this particular page has a title tech lift test this is the title open any other website uh this has download selenium as a title um you can open any random website and you can have the title right so title is also a tag in html so when i do a right click and when i check page source you will be able to see somewhere there is a title mentioned let's search it title as somewhere you will see the main title thing there are a lot of places the title is used but very first time when it is used you can check when it is and that will be the one you should check okay let me check this yeah this one so the title is for that page is download selenium this one see here that's why if you see the here it is showing me this title this is the title <clears throat> so i can print that title also i can get that title so here i can print it directly also so i'll say system.out.println i want to get this title and i want to print it it's like this so this will print me the the title of that page okay that's it and there are other functions also if i'll say driver dot uh, get current url so this will give you the url which is present like this this is url this is also url right so this it will capture it can capture because url gets changed you know when you do something the url may change so for example when i click on the product the url is something different when i click on the contact it slash contact is coming here so url gets changed you can capture it by saying driver dot get current url okay try it try it at your end i'm not writing it driver dot get window we'll talk about window handle and window handles but not today i'm checking is there anything else which we where we can talk about no it's fine so driver dot close and another function is there which is driver dot quit okay both are different things so when you say driver dot quit it will it will actually destroy the whole driver you know object part and close will actually close the current browser only okay so it may be possible that you are working with multiple browsers and it will close a particular browser where it is active as of now okay where it is pointing out but driver dot quit will actually close all the browser whatever is open and will destroy the whole object also it's like this right so basically when you are working with a single page application or, or on the same you know website you are working there is no child page there is no new tab you are opening through the automation script at the end you should write driver dot close driver dot quit so it will close everything in a good way now when we will run this let's see what will happen so 
it should open the website yes and uh, let's see what it has done i have to go to just a minute my console output i have to check fine yeah it's already there so yeah it's printing this title okay it's printing this uh, tech lift test because of line number 33 where i'm printing the title okay page source has come but i have not printed it that's it but i can debug this okay so you can put a debug point so let's learn about the debugging part now in eclipse basically uh you can there are line numbers visible here right and there is a blue bar here you just double click there and it'll create a breakpoint okay, so what is this debug or debug point what is that so here you can run your code in two mode one mode is directly running it so if you see here there is one mode which is running as java application and there is another is debug as java application the debug is also running, executing your program, but it will stop wherever you have put the um, debug point and you can observe something at that point. So I'm run, running in debug mode now. Debug as Java application I did. See here, hi is printed because of line number, line number 21, but then it is asking me to switch to the debug mode that's perfectly fine now now see here what what is done till now is it's it has opened this website right here now and now i will wait for four seconds so here if you see there are icons this is step over or f6 that means go to the next line so if i click here it will go to the next line okay so yes, after four seconds, it has reached to the next line. And here I'm saying, get the page source and store it in this string. So if I run this particular line and if I hover over it, see here, I'm getting the whole page source. Okay, it's a very big thing. That's why I have not printed in the console window, but I got the page source. And then I'm saying, hey, get the title and print it. It's like this. So you will observe that here at the right hand side in console window, the title will come. See here, it has come. Now I'm saying close the browser. Uh, see here, it is open till now, but you will observe that this, this is going to close. Yes, it's closed. And at the end, you'll see driver dot quit. Done. There are other functions also. I am not going into that part as of now, but uh, let's go back here. Our topic is basically today is how to find the element, right? The most important part of, you know, when you learn Selenium and you become test automation engineer, you are in day-to-day -day work, you know, 30% of your time will be consumed in finding the element, basically, when you are going to automate. Rest of the time, maybe you will do it in execution, you know, resolving any issue, but most of the time will be consumed on finding the element properly. So we'll talk about what is element, how to find those elements, the techniques and all, okay?